And welcome back to Let's Play Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga 2. Last time, we made it to the first save point in the underwater cable, and I said I was going to do some mantra training, which I have completed. As you can see from the mantra grid here, as soon as it loads up, we are fully cleared on the center of the mantra grid and can easily branch into anything with all my characters. Uh, when we get our next set of characters, I will also do the, this for them, because uh, they do not come with all of these already mastered, and... Again, it'll just be convenient to do so. Going forward, though, I probably won't do any intense, like, get everything training sessions like this. Though I will probably develop towards specific skills if I feel they're necessary. Now, for Surf and Argilla, I've got them working on Fallen Hero. I definitely want Medea on both of them. And yes, I do want it on both of them, not just Surf. Uh, by the end of this, because it unlocks a very good combo skill. Otherwise, after that, I'll have Surf work on Earth Shrine and... Let's see, Ice Demon, because the two, uh, Earth Shrine will give me Earth Boost, as you can see here, which I really want that. And then Ice Demon, I want Mabufu for the upcoming dungeon. Argilla, I'll probably have her work towards Bolt Lord and Dragon Lord. Those will probably be the most useful for us, uh, not in this dungeon, but in the relatively near future. I don't care too, too much about what I want Gale to work on, but I will definitely have him uh, pick up uh, Bolt Lord, just because that'll be very handy, not for the upcoming boss, but for the boss at the end of the next dungeon. Now let's retool our uh, newly acquired skills. As you can see, I've got Gale in front of the party there, and I better use a chakra drop on him. And let's uh, hit the recover button here. <laughs> we already forgot that I wanted to set my skills. Alright, Gil, he should be good there. Uh, Argilla, what I want her to pick up is Taru Kaja, and the reason for that will become apparent soon enough. Uh, don't really have anything else I care about on her, so we'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, let me move these to the front. And you know what, I can get rid of Void Earth and just give her a little bit more elemental coverage. So we'll throw on Xan for now, and that should do us good. Now, uh, Surf, I'm going to make a bit of an interesting addition to his skill set. I'm going to swap out Ingest Mana for Body Rush, and then we'll keep the rest of these elemental skills for now. And the reason I put on Body Rush, even though he has terrible strength, will become apparent in the near future. Now, we, with that all taken care of, we can finally head on our way. In this chest, we just get... A few rations. Could always use more of those. Although, probably a few of them will just kind of rot in my inventory. Don't know how well they preserve these. Going up this ladder, we will come onto this platform and can't do anything else from here, but there is a switch waiting for us. Alright, Impusas. These guys are weak to force, and uh, that's unfortunate. Ooh, that's especially unfortunate. Hopefully, they don't attack Argilla. But yeah, these guys, as you can see, attack with Zeo. Pretty annoying, because there's no way to cover Gale from that. Now, there is a combo skill, Soul Blaster. And I want to show this one off, because this one is pretty awesome. Alright, have Gale use it, and... There, check out that damage for this point in the game. Even if that didn't crit, that would have killed them all. Now, to explain uh, combo skills in this game, uh, we want to flip the switch. Uh, they actually work a little bit differently in this game. In the previous game, combo skills... Uh, well, at the very least, dual combo skills, uh, the strength of the skill worked off of the average of your stats, and I'm not quite sure how triple combo skills work in this game, but for combos that take three people in this game, the damage is based on whoever uses it. Since Soul Blaster is a physical skill, if Gale uses it, it'll be a lot stronger than, say, if Argilla used it. Speaking of that, I actually want them to swap their rings out. And just need to make a quick lineup change. Uh, I showed off Soul Blaster just for the sake of using it, but uh, I do want to do some hunting so Surf and Argilla can get Medea going, and Surf can start working on other skills as well. Soul Blaster requires two single target physical skills and the Taru Kaja spell, which is why I put Body Rush onto Surf so we could utilize it. And that is a pretty good I win button at this point in the game for any enemy that does not resist physical. It will taper off around the two thirds mark of the game, but it is ridiculously good for winning fights until that point. Alright, Lamia here, she is weak to Earth, so we'll just have Gale now with that, and then have Surf uh, scoop her right up and go for- oof, that didn't work. That's okay, we can just pass right back around and go for another Devour. Easy peasy. 
Now, because me, or uh, Fallen Hero, rather, is a Tier 2 mantra, we'll take a little bit longer to develop than the Tier 1 ones, but still, uh, as long as we're diligent about our hunting, I should have it uh, done well before we get to the end of this dungeon. Once Surf is done working on it, then I'll put Argilla back in the middle so she can start working on Fallen Hero. And then from going on for the rest of the dungeon, I'll have Gale and Argilla hunt when I can get them to hunt. But I'd much rather have uh, Surf uh, get working on his stuff just because, well, he's got the highest magic stat. So I get the most mileage out of it if he learns all those skills. Got some other Impusa here. We'll hit her with a Zan because that is her weakness. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Gale's too strong for that at that point. So, in that case, I'd probably rather have him do Body Rush, and that should put her in the range where Devour can just finish her off. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you notice we are at level 11 for everybody now. We'll just hit this small Karma Terminal real quick. Alright, more Empusas. Let's see, how about, let's go for Mad Rush, see if we can't set both of them up for a hunt skill. Nah. A little uh, too light on that. You know what, we'll have uh, Argilla devour this one. And just gonna go for a little trick here because devour is a weaker skill. We're gonna have uh, Gale tag the, oh, never mind. <laughs> well, I had an idea there. That's a shame. Yeah, the Empusas are quite weak, so it's actually rather difficult to hunt them. So, we'll make a safety save at this Karma Terminal. Although at this point, it shouldn't be too worrying the encounters we get into. I've got all the skills, and with the levels that we've gotten, uh, we should be fine. And I completely forgot to mention what I was going to say, but much like the previous game, uh, when we reach level 10 and level 20, our karma ascends to a new plane, and we can slot more skills. Of course, in this case, at level 10, we can slot six skills. Yeah, I didn't really feel it was necessary to show that on screen, especially since I got to show it a couple times in Digital Devil Saga 1. Mizuchi over there is weak to fire. Let's see. What I'm going to do, though, is nail the Impusa with Body Rush. There we go. Right in the range where I can devour her. And let's see here. Mizuchi is resistant to Earth, uh, weak to fire and force, so we'll focus on those skills. And since I can get this guy into devour range again, we'll just do that. Pray we don't get a stomach ache. Make me rather sad if we do it. And we didn't. Very good. Uh, those Mizuchis, as you can see in the item reward there, they can drop Ice Blasts, and we actually will want to supply for those, supply of those for something coming up. Uh, uh, it is very possible that, ooh, Firewall is very nice, but it is definitely possible that I won't have Surf uh, running Mabufu for the thing I actually want it for, and in that case, Ice Blast will serve the uh, purpose quite well. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we can't really easily get attacking items. Hey, Kaiwan, this guy, let me check my notes, is weak to fire. And as you can see, he uses Hama there. Much like the previous game, it just does percent damage instead of being instant kill. Still not sure why exactly the, that change. Uh, instant kill is nowhere near as threatening in this game as it was in Nocturne. Mm, yeah, we'll uh, pass the turns around. I, I definitely would rather have Surf focus on hunting at this point. Even if it brings our money down a little bit, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Okay, let's devour this guy. There we go. Just want to get towards me. Oh, hey, he dropped the clover. I forgot that those guys could drop that. But yes, uh, the enemies in this game can drop plants, and that is quite good on your funds if they drop them often. And we do actually have ways, better ones than the previous game, to guarantee that. Okay, Shikome, also weak to fire. And Expel, although it's extremely unlikely that you'll have Expel skills at this point. As you can see, uh, Gale is doing pretty sizable damage with his physical attacks. Their physical attacks scale a lot better in this game than they did in Digital Devil Saga 1, and I generally uh, appreciate them a lot more in this game. Uh, it's a lot easier to get them to the point where, uh, like, even with Soul Blaster, as I demonstrated earlier, we can very easily just uh, completely decimate encounters with it. Yeah, right. I'll probably start cutting out some of these chaff encounters uh, soon enough. But for right now, I may as well keep some of them in. But yeah, when I'm just doing a uh, hunting like this, I may very well just uh, cut out the encounters. And uh, otherwise, probably you can just... Uh, I mean, once I get the skills that I want, I can probably just dump Soul Blaster on the enemy, even the physical resistant ones. Uh, their HP are so low, it is actually possible that Soul Blaster could kill them. That's a decent crook rate. Okay, so they took this route because there's some treasure for us to get here. 
Very nice, quick data. Hmm, who knows that shiny spot on the ground? Not something you can actually examine. And this one, get a charge shot. We'll throw that on Gale, I guess. It doesn't matter too much. One of the few pieces of ammo we actually find in this game. Now, taking the place of the noise items in this game, there is the data items, which are the same thing, more or less. They are permanent stat boosters. And like before, I'm going to focus them onto Surf just to round them out a little bit more. Though, unlike the previous game, there is actually going to come a point well before the end of the game where I start using those on different characters. Or rather, a different character. But we'll get there when we get there. There is also one more uh, difference with my stat booster usage in this game that I'll bring up. Okay, we got uh, slime or blobs here, rather. Uh, this would be a good chance to show off a duo combo. Uh, dual combos in this game, instead of running off the average of your character's uh, magic stat, instead uses the combined stat. So it actually does more damage than if a character was using them individually, up to a point. Uh, after a point, there is, uh, let me see, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that combo skills do not factor in passives that boost your elemental damage, so once you start getting access to those, it is more effective from a damage dealing perspective to just simply have a character use them directly rather than make a combo, but that can also still uh, feed into something that I did with the combo skills in the previous game, whereas I deliberately use them to do less damage, just so I can guarantee I can hunt the enemies after the words. For a while, though, that does mean that combo skills are less effective for that purpose, because uh, if I have Gaia or Surf participate in them, they will absolutely kill the enemies and prevent me from hunting them. Also, uh, since Surf has his mantra mastered, I'm going to switch Argilla up to the middle so she can hunt more efficiently. We're at max solar noise here, so there is a chance for a Berserk encounter. And hey, I called it. Uh, this is actually very fortunate because I did want to mention something about Berserk Encounters that I did not mention in the previous uh, video. Uh, there was a lot to talk about with these, so it was kind of hard to fit every single thing in. Yeah, we're having pretty bad luck here. Yeah, there is an example of how just because you're in Berserk mode does not mean you have guaranteed crits. You can fail to crit in Berserk mode. That's a lot of lost MP. Well, our Jill is out, but she's sleeping anyway, so she'll get a little bit back. Maybe I should have had him attack someone different. Yeah, doesn't matter too much. There we go, finally get to see Surf's critical animation. But yes, whenever you see that, that means you got a critical. Now, uh, again, I completely forgot what I was going to mention here, but uh, with uh, Berserk mode, uh, when you are in Berserk mode, your passives, such as your elemental resistances and uh, various other passives, those are still in effect. Plus, there are some rings we get later that provide benefits specifically to your human form, which are otherwise useless, but their perks do apply when you're in Berserk mode. Alright. We're gonna want to swing by the small terminal again just to swap out Surf's Mantra, though I am going to have Argillo be the one primarily doing the hunting still. Okay. Let's get this set up on him. Just keeping an eye on my item list, I'm at the point where I gotta flip the page soon. <laughs> One really annoying thing about the mantra system in this game is that whenever you've uh, mastered one, it does automatically go to the screen where it slowly unlocks the mantra so that you can continue on your progression. I don't really like that, uh, it, it's kind of annoying, but eh. If there was a way to just hold a button it would go faster, that would be nice, but sadly, no. It does make uh, setting new mantras take longer than it really should. I was trying to have Argilla hunt there, and then Gale got a critical and blew the whole operation. And that's just something you gotta deal with sometimes. One of those random variants that you can't account for. Okay. Now, there should be another treasure somewhere around here. Nice, and the uh, level up Surf got there, he got a bonus point of strength. That'll be handy for hunting. Okay, then this tunnel we get a very good item. We get the Vital Ring. I'm going to put that on Surf because obviously he has very low vitality since I'm not investing in it. This will afford him a little protection, some extra HP, and some reduced physical damage. Very, very nice. Also, just gotta flip my page here. Okay. And, alright, 
Luckily, the next treasure is in a very hard-to-miss spot, so I don't have to worry too much. Just a trick to keep in mind with hunting that I mentioned in the previous Let's Play, but still, it would be a good idea to keep in mind here. All oh, right, uh, that reminded me there, that recovery. Uh, Surf has Medea, so I may as well set that, just in case the situation comes up where I need to use it. Uh, nothing here that I really care about is weak to Zeo. Actually, I don't think anything's weak to Zeo, period, here. So we'll bench that. There's plenty of things that null it, though. <laughs> Did I actually say what I was going to mention about hunt skills? Uh, if I didn't, uh, when hunting, when you have a character hunt multiple enemies in a single fight, and there's one enemy left, probably a good idea to avoid hunting that enemy, just so you don't have to worry about getting a stomach ache and having all your effort undone. Okay, now we're in the third small terminal room. Nothing we need to do with that terminal though. Okay, get some landmines. Those are always handy. Those are the multi-targeting earth item, and. Nothing I'm too worried about there. Hmm, strong presence. What awaits us on the other side of this door? Ah, oh, what? They sabotaged it. Ah, uh, no, I, I will not. I will do neither. And this is not a terribly difficult encounter. <laughs> I'll definitely want to try and hunt that Pavel Sig, so let's just have uh, Gale nail the Mizuchi with Zan. That'll just. Oh, that didn't kill it. Ah, you know what? Slight revision. Let's have Ardilla devour that. We'll have... Yeah, I don't have Earth on Surf, so... We'll just kill this thing outright. Very nice. Alright. Well, now we gotta figure out something to do with this uh, broken switch here. Eee, decent level up there. Maybe we can get one of those Repairman Brothers. Yep, looks like uh, Gale's thinking on the same wavelength. Now we have to double back a bit in the dungeon here, so I'm just going to meet you at where the Repairman is waiting for us. Alright, when we make it back to the room with small Terminal B, we'll feel a strong presence beyond this door. And hey, it's the repairman. He's assault. He's being assaulted. I'm not gonna let you attack our buddy. All right, let's rescue this guy. Okay. You know, uh, well, anyways, these. <laughs> I was just thinking. I forgot to set uh, Argilla's mantra. That these shadows here are weak to force. Let's uh, have Surf uh, keep these guys up. Yeah. Before we uh, head back, I'll definitely need to switch out Argilla's mantra since she has already mastered her thing. Okay. Body rush this guy, devour this guy, and I won't uh, devour the Taiwan just in case Surf gets a stomach ache. But we should just be able to finish him off with a normal attack. And unfortunately, the forced encounters in this game are not terribly interesting. Definitely less interesting than the ones that you got into in Digital Devil Saga 1. Ah, so this is his brother. It must be twins or something. Or just born extremely close together and look extremely identical. <laughs> hmm. Looks like you're gonna have to stay here, buddy. Alright, so now we've got the repairman, and unfortunately we have to walk all the way back to the cut cable. Yeah, they got kind of lazy with this dungeon. I'll meet you there. Alright, we've made it back here. Now let's check out that switch. And this guy fix it up, fixes it up for us right quick. Alright, looks like he bails on out of here and probably for the best, or, well, okay, he stands right there. <laughs> uh, anyways, this switch does not actually activate the way forward, but flipping it changes which partition is down in this room. And we're going to flip it first to check out the other side. Because beyond this partition, we've got another yellow node here, and this has a pretty good treasure in it waiting for us. This gives us the luck ring. Very nice. Uh, well, actually, it, it, I, I could take it or leave it. I suppose it's decently handy if you're trying to avoid ambushes or something, but eh, I'm not too concerned about that. We actually have not gotten an ambush in a point where I could easily show it on camera. 
but much like the previous game, uh, that does, ambushes does not mean that the enemy goes first. What an ambush is, is when you do not get a chance to transform and you start in human form. Like the previous game, they are extremely annoying. Oh, uh, they're a little bit more manageable in this game, I suppose. Actually, I've never really thought too hard about it. I'll have to weigh the odds. I will tell you that you don't get an item like Megiddo Fire in this game, which is rather frustrating. That was the ultimate counter to those ambushes. Let's see, nothing down that way except more collapsed rubble. Lots of collapsed rubble. This thing has not seen some serious maintenance in a while. Are we sure that those guys didn't sever the cables? Are we sure they, they just didn't fray naturally like that? Probably have Gale focus on hunting more at this point. Oh, wait. Oh, I screwed up. Okay, hold on. I'll meet you back. <laughs> All right, you did not see my mistake back there. Uh, oh, well, at least uh, when I have to backtrack, I can just edit that out, I suppose. <laughs> uh, man. I should have uh, known that I was uh, second-guessing myself there. Whatever. Yeah, All right. And within this chest, we get a decently useful item, a revival gem. As always, can always uh, use plenty of those. All right, Gale has mastered his mantra. I'm doing quite a bit of hunting right now, which is why I've been cutting out the encounters. It's not terribly interesting, and it mostly involves me sandbagging so that I don't actually kill the things before I can eat them. All right, first order of business is we want to hit this switch. So that'll throw the partition over there that was blocking us before. And additionally, before we head on, may as well hit this switch while we're here. Uh, this is a dual locked partition, so we have to hit both switches. Okay, now I'll meet you on the other side, where we're supposed to be now. Alright, here we are, and now that the... Now, let's forget it, I'll just keep talking now that the partition is up. Uh, let's uh, not tear these guys, just to take them out of the way. Check out the strength of this combo. Nice. And, well, this is a good chance to show off anything. Now that both Surf and Argilla have access to Medea, we get the Angelic Grace combo, and this is an excellent combo skill for quite a while in the game. It uh, recovers your HP greatly, uh, usually between, like, uh, right now to heal around 100 or so to everybody, and towards the mid-game, probably like 180, but also it applies Raku Kaja to your entire party, and it is actually a very, very long time before you get access to Raku Kaja otherwise in this game. Uh, compared to the previous game, where it was one of the second buff skills you get, it was one of the, it's one of the last buff skills you get in this game. So yeah, it's a extremely helpful combo, and you definitely want two people with Medea in your party at all times, just for uh, the sake of having it available. Very good. Hey, a medical kit. That's very handy. Could possibly sell that for some money, also. <laughs> we will actually need to spend quite a bit of money in the upcoming dungeon for a certain thing that I want to get. Now, as you can see, now that that partition is up, we can get to the end of the dungeon and the boss of this area. I'll meet you over there. Alright, here we are, ready to fight the boss. Ah, well, that's, we'll just keep this in. In fact, uh, you know what, let's just get these guys out of the way. Soul Blaster! Very nice. Oh, these guys must be fizz resistant. Ah, well, you can get some last minute hunting in, or not. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, there is some uh, light skill revision that I want to do. Yeah, these guys are fizz resistant. Should have consulted my enemy list. Oh, well. First off, we want to make a safety save, although I sincerely doubt I'm going to lose to this guy. I, uh, with all the levels that I've gained, I, I should probably beat this guy no problem, so... Oh. Duh. <laughs> Sorry if uh, my commentary awkwardly cut there, I just accidentally uh, went up towards my spoiler files. <laughs> but before we head up this ladder, let's just stop right here, make sure I don't get any encounters. We want to reorganize our party slightly. Uh, we'll do Argilla and Gale. Uh, what I really want is we'll put Terra onto Surf. We will swap out for Bufu. And I want to put on Earth Boost, which he got from Mastering Earth Shrine. And we won't need Devour for this fight. Let's see. And Medea there. We got Medea on him. Now, I... Hmm. 
Well, I do have Terra on everybody, but to keep this fight interesting, I'm only gonna have Surf use it. So, let's climb on up and take on the fight. And yes, Terra, I have that because this guy is weak to it. <laughs> Looks like this guy is recognizing us. Believe me, we're as real as we look. Anyway... Our boss here is Hecaton Shires. He's usually an endgame enemy, but in this game he is an early game trash boss, and we are going to totally whip him. But, uh, just to keep things interesting, uh, I'll only have Surf utilize Terra. Otherwise, we could destroy this guy before he even gets a chance to use his more interesting skills. Besides, uh, doing it this way will let me set up some more interesting things. So, prove our physical attacks there. That is some pretty nasty damage there, but we have a perfect counter for it. We can use Angelic Grace, which will heal us greatly and uh, keep us from taking as much damage because we get a stack of Rocky Kaja going. Now, after you've damaged him enough, he will use Hundred Fist, a pretty powerful physical attack move, but not too bad. However, it gets a bit more complicated as the fight goes on, so we'll want to do another Angelic Grace because this time we want just the defense bonus. And he didn't do it there, but he can use a hundred fists again. And I'll just uh, sandbag a bit. Oh, we missed, so that takes that kind of out of my hand right there. Oh, he has counter. I did not realize that. Now, he increases his power, and Hundred Fist does double the damage it did before. If you did not have the boost from Angelic Grace, that would hit pretty hard. Now, I know what you're wondering. Does it get any stronger than that? Ha <laughs> ha, well, you will see. Alright. And we'll just have Gale nail him with the Body Rush here. And he is on Death's Door. Hits for the counter, but I'm not too good. And he misses completely anyway. He's an Executioner there. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is instead I'm going to use Medea. Hmm. You know what? I, I didn't want to say this because I'm not sure, but uh, I'm pretty sure Angelic Grace is a percent heal rather than a uh, one that scales off of your magic. That is uh, definitely triple power. Here we go. Alright, I think that's a good point to uh, end this fight here. Uh, if you let it go on for any longer, he can get it up to five times power, and uh, that could potentially kill Surf, so we're just gonna take him out now. Not too worried about his counterattacks. Okay, and counter, it just has a 50% chance of retaliating with a physical attack whenever you uh, nail him with the, your own physical attacks. But we took care of him. But yes, uh, let it go on for one more time. He hits it with an even harder one, and very good chance that that could kill Surf due to his low HP and low vitality. Hey, we got Mabufu. That was what I was hoping for. Let's uh, finish off our leveling here. And for defeating him, we get a yellow crystal, which is a gem that we can slot into our rings for stat bonuses. The crystals increase our magic stat. I'm going to hang on to that for now until I can use it on somebody who would benefit from it more. You'd think it would be obvious to use it on Surf, but honestly, uh, I feel like that would be a waste since he's already got really high magic anyways, and it's kind of a negligible boost. Speaking of uh, boosts, though, definitely want to use that HP data on him. Sorry if I just confused you there. I got Discord on my phone, and I forgot to uh, actually uh, mute the notifications. All right, and we want to take... This Narcissus is a more valuable plant than a clover. And if we go beyond that door, we will get into the next area and also get into a fairly lengthy cutscene. This video has been running long enough for now, so I think I'll save that for the next video. So let's head back to the small terminal and save our game up. Okay. I'll probably also want to retool my skills when we come back, but that can be saved for the next video. But, as always, I thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.